Okay, Michael, so the, here's a, a nice little concrete example to, to think about this. Um, we're, let's pretend that we're no longer in a world of a single agent, like we've been thinking about with reinforcement learning, but we've gone full-blown generality to two agents, okay? <laughs> and let's call those agents A and B. And they're going to be in a very simple game where A gets to make a choice, and then B gets to make a choice, and then A might be able to make a choice. So this tree that I've drawn over on the right is going to capture the dynamics of this specific game that I'm imagining. So these uh, little nodes here, these circles represent states, and we can think about those in states in the same way that we've talked about reinforcement learning in the past. The, uh, the edges between these nodes uh, represent actions that one could take. So this should look familiar. This is just basically a game tree like anyone who's taken a, an AI course might have seen, okay? I guess so. It doesn't look like a very interesting game, but no. it, I guess it's a ab sort of abstract example. Yes, it's a very simple game just so that we can get a handle on some basic concepts. So in particular, uh, if you look at the details of this game, you start out in state one, okay, and A gets to make a choice between two actions, going left or going right. If A goes right, goes right, uh, she ends up in state three. Uh, if she goes left, she ends up in state two. Regardless, B gets to make a choice. From state three, we can choose to go right, and really that's all that can happen. And this, what happens if B goes right from state three is that uh, a value of plus two is assigned to A, okay? All of these numbers at the bottom, at the leaves here, are gonna be values uh, or rewards, if you wanna think about them that way, that are assigned to player A. And in fact, for the purposes of this game, uh, it's gonna be the case that B always gets the opposite of what A gets. So if A gets plus two, then B gets minus two. If A gets plus four, B gets minus four. If A gets minus one, B gets plus one. Does that make sense? Yeah, though, could you write it down so that I won't forget? Okay, that's fine. So by the way, this is a very specific kind of game uh, here, and it has a name, which I want to get right. This is a um, two-player, zero-sum, finite deterministic game of perfect information. So uh, as, a, as a title or as a description of, the, of this kind of game, does this make sense to you? Do you think you know what they all mean, what all those words mean? So two players, because it's A and B, mm -hmm. zero sum, because the, you said the leaves are A's reward and B's reward is the negation. So if you add the two rewards together, you're always going to get zero. That's almost right. <laughs> okay. Um, it's not exactly right. Actually, so zero sum really just means that the, the sum of the rewards is always a constant. And that constant needs to be zero. It doesn't need to be zero. So if it added up to 11, that would still be zero sum? If it added up to 11 everywhere, yes. Huh. Okay, interesting choice of terminology. Uh, finite, I don't know, everything seems to be finite here. There's no infinite number of choices or states or depth. Mm -hmm. uh, deterministic... Well, again, thinking about it in an MDP-ish kind of way, there's no stochastic transitions in this particular picture. Right. So if I'm in state two and uh, I go right, I always end up in state four, period. Right. Mm -hmm. Game, I guess a game is because it's more than one player? Sure. Uh, a perfect information. It doesn't quite sound like the same terminology that we used in the MDP setting, but I'm wondering if that's like I know what state I'm in when I'm making a decision. So it's like a like an MDP as opposed to a POMDP. That's exactly right. It's it's that you know what state you're in, and you yeah, that's exactly what it means. It's like being in an MDP versus a POMDP. That's a great analogy. Cool. And does it matter that it's a tree like this? Because we when we were looking at MDPs, they we had more complex structures of graphs and things. Well, you can think of this as unrolling the MDP, if you want to. Ah, uh, well, so then those states are sort of time-stamped and history-stamped. Yeah, for the purposes of this discussion, yes. And that's a perfectly okay. reasonable way of thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. But in general, we're going to be thinking about game trees. But actually, we're going through all of this uh, for nothing because we're going to discover pretty soon that none of this matters. Uh, <laughs> but give me a couple of slides to get there, okay? <laughs> sure. Okay. So this is about the simplest or at least the the least complicated uh, game that you can think about. A two-player, zero-sum, finite, deterministic game of perfect information. You know, basically, I can look at this tree, I know everything I need to know, and I can make decisions about what action I might want to take in order to maximize my reward. Okay? Good. All right. Now, in MDPs, of course, we had this notion of uh, policies, right? You remember what a policy was, Michael? Uh, mapping from states to actions. So in the game theory world, we have something very similar to uh, policies. Uh, we call them strategies. So all a strategy is is a mapping of uh, all <laughs> of, of all possible states to actions. So for example, here's a strategy uh, that A might have. 
Win in state one, go left. And win in state four, also go left. That seems like a terrible strategy. Does it? Well, just if nothing else, just in state four. Sure. But it's a strategy, right? Okay. But it's just it's a strategy for one of the players. Right. There's, exactly. Each player has a strategy. And that makes sense, right? Before we talked about a policy of mapping from states to action, there was only ever one player, only ever one agent. Um, and so we didn't have to worry about what other strategies there were. Here, when we talk about a strategy, it's always with respect to one of the players of the game. Okay, so, question. I've just given you one strategy, which is what A does in all the states A could potentially end up in. How many other strategies are there for A? Ah, for A. Okay, that sounds like a quiz. That does sound like a quiz. Let's make it a quiz. 